Welcome to Daily Armor. Today we're going to be back in the book of John, chapter number 11, but today we're looking at verse number 6. So look with me at verse number 6, and it says, well, let me back up one page. That's <clears throat> what I get for not putting on my glasses. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days, still in the same place where he was. So the previous devotion, we realized that the one who Jesus loved was sick. Um, it wasn't it wasn't a, an issue with whether he loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus or not. Um, their relationship, their fondness for one another um, was is very well documented. We all can agree that they were highly favored to Jesus. Um, you and I, if we're saved, we're highly favored to the Lord. He loves us. He loves all of us, the lost, the saved. He loves everyone. Um, that's not a question, but when we pray, sometimes the enemy wants to bring that up like they're, like they're, they're, like there's an issue, like there's a problem. Um, I am presently... Um, <laughs> Gosh, I don't even know how to, I, I'm, I'm not even going to share the details of it, but going through just a really, really big ordeal. And apparently it's been festering for a long time, and now it's made itself, um, it's revealed itself fully, I think. I think it's fully. Um, and yet... The Lord has already had me in John chapter 11, already had me in, you know, Mark chapter 4 was what my Sunday school lesson was on and about a great storm. And I wondered when I was teaching that, and I didn't actually get to teach it to the class, but I was in an essence, you know, going over it and teaching it to myself, um, learning about it, you know, going over it, um, what great storm was going to be um, welling up in my life. And that's exactly what happened on yesterday. Um, is something just came to a head and I'm like, oh, okay. So this is a much bigger issue than we realized. This is a much bigger problem that we realized. And we are going to have to trust the Lord for it. Um, and that's what Mary and Martha were doing when they made their request. Um, when they asked, you know, when they they said um, in verse number three, it says, therefore his sister sent unto him. They sent word unto him. We send word unto the Lord when we pray, when we're talking to the Lord through prayer. We're sending word unto him saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. So he is aware of the problem and he receives the, receives the word here. Um, and he, he's God. Jesus is God. He already knew he already had himself a day away, um, already had himself, you know, beyond reach physically, but, and he, we may physically beyond a physical reach, but we are so with, the Lord is so with us that it is, it's almost like that he is always holding our hand. It is that physical touch that we get from him. And here this um, is just welling up and now he's heard and the other disciples that the disciples, they don't think anything about it. They, they don't know fully what's going on. They don't know what the plan is. I don't know what the plan is. You don't know what the plan is, but sometimes a lot of times, most of the time for myself, when I'm praying about something, um, he chooses to make me wait every once in a while every once in a while i mean i really did have a praise already monday more early monday morning um that was a, it was kind of a big issue and the lord just i mean he answered that prayer and it was very quick um and i'm so thankful um but then later in the morning you know another situation came up that you know i was made aware of and and then another one in the afternoon that I was made aware of. And so it was, you know, learning to trust him whenever he doesn't answer immediately. When we are the ones that have to wait. 
And when we pray, why does he come? Why doesn't he come through immediately? Well, I'm not going to pretend I have an answer for that. I don't have an answer for your situations. I don't have an answer for my own situations. Um, I don't have an answer for that. Um, it reminds me of Job whenever Job was asking the Lord, why was he going through all this? What was going on? And the Lord spent the next, it was 38, 39, 40, 44 chapters, four chapters explaining to him why he didn't have to give him an explanation. Four chapters. Read them. It is absolutely beautiful. When we think about the simple phrase that in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then there's a description of, you know, an overview of what was done day by day by day. Read Job chapter 38, 39, 40, and 41 and get some details. And that was just a small portion that he shared with us in those four chapters of what all that he did and, and has a plan I mean, he, he did things so perfectly and things work so fluidly together. They, they, they merge and combine and they work together. And he takes care of everything and everyone all at the same time. And that boggles the mind. We cannot comprehend that. And in that, he was explaining to Job um, Job chapter 38, verse number four, he asked him, um, let me look at that real quick. I had, um, I had it marked in my Bible, but I've, I have to re I find it here. Um, I'm close to it. Job chapter 38, verse number four, it says, where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Where were you when I made all this? Where were, did I, you know, were you there? Did we inquire together? He's letting him know who the authority is. And Job knows who the authority is. He knew th who the authority was. Job was hurting physically, emotionally. He was hurting. And he was just, do you ever like, what in the world is going on? Um, Todd and I have been saying that for several months. We're like, something's up. And we don't know what's up, but something's going on. And and it's, it's a spiritual battle. And we're like, Lord, what's going on? Not really that we're expecting an answer, but Lord, we're just letting you know we don't understand. And I hope that, you know, Lord, if I'm supposed to get it, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get it. But all I can conclude is that, Lord, this is hard and this is difficult and I need you even more and more and more. Lord, I need you more and more and more. And I'm praying about some things. I know you're praying about some things. We all have things. We all are going through stuff. Nobody is exempt. Nobody is sitting up there and they have all the bad luck. And that everybody else is, is got it made in the shade and they're just cruising through life. Nobody is cruising through life. They may look like it. And you may get on social media and it looks like everything is just happy and cheery and, and everybody's just doing all these wonderful things because that's just what they share. That's what they post. That's just a small little portion of maybe even their year or a day or something or, you know, whatever. But that's not reality of every moment. And it's not revealing everything. It's not, re it's not revealing all of the hard and difficult stuff that they're going through. And we all need the Lord. And we're all praying and waiting on that prayer. So what do we do when we're waiting on Him to come through? Um, I I'm, I'm, was in his word a lot today and I didn't, you know, um, I didn't get through every verse that I wanted to look up because um, when I got to Psalms 145, and this is where I want to end, um, at Psalms 145, um, I realized this was, this was um, kind of in a nutshell um, of what God had for me. Um, Lord, I, I'm praying about this is some serious things and, and we can kind of do something about it, but Lord, it's really actually a lot bigger than we are. It's a whole lot bigger than we are. And I just have this feeling that you want to do more than just answer the prayer. Just like with Mary and Martha, he wanted to do more than just heal Lazarus. He knew what he was going to do. He already had a plan. That's why he, he stayed back two more. That's why he was away. 
I believe that's why he was physically away from them. Um, not just kind of getting out away from the crowd, but he was, he had to get away from Mary and Martha and Lazarus. He knew what was coming and he knew he already had a plan and he knew how he was going to use it. It was going to be bigger than just healing another person. He was going to raise him from the dead. He, they were going to have to roll away that stone and, and he was going to say, Lazarus, come forth. It was bigger than what he can understand. Maybe that God is doing something bigger than just what that little thing or that big thing that you're praying about. He has a way to do it in such a way that it, it affects so many people, not just you and not just me, that he has such a way that we are going to shout it and proclaim it and others are going to witness it. And it's going to be a testimony of what the Lord is able to do and what the Lord is doing and has done and will do again. And that's what I'm getting from Psalms 145. So flip over there if you've got your Bibles out to Psalms 145. There's 21 verses. Um, I'm not going to go through all of those for the sake of time. Um, but I will mention several. Um, and if you want to read the whole psalm, uh, like, you know, I have read the whole psalm. If you want to read the whole psalm, every little word, every little verse is important and vital. And if I read it, I will get stuck and we'll never, we'll never get this uh, devotion. Um, it'll last an hour because it's really, really good. And it, this is actually a psalm, uh, which I've read the book of Psalms um, probably several times. Um, but this one is one in my in my Bible that I have in that I use um, at home that I didn't have marked up, and now it's it's marked up. It's it's underlined in circles and 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 put you know little rectangles around to to highlight things because this is a special special chapter. Um, and I like even the subscription in my Bible says God's unsearchable greatness, God's unsearchable greatness. And then it says, David's Psalm of Praise. So this is a Psalm of Praise. I'm praising him while I'm waiting on him. I'm waiting on him and I'm praising him for what he has done. I'm praising him for what I know he's going to do because he's, his track record with me is that he's going to come through. It's going to be in his time. It's, it doesn't mean it's going to happen right this second. But when it happens, he's doing way more with it than what I can even fathom or explain. But it says, um, and I want to go ahead and skip on down to verse number three. It says, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. His greatness, you cannot even fathom, I cannot even fathom how great God is. He comes up with stuff that we, me and you have never thought of. He is way bigger than I am. He's way bigger than you are. He is absolutely amazing. Oh, I like verse number four as well. I've got it underlined. It says, One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty works. When I read that, I thought, Lord, you're going to do something we're going to be able to tell our children about. And we're going to be able to tell our grandchildren about. And not just immediately, not just, you know, whenever it happens, but for years to come. This is going to be something so pivotal in my life and in Todd's life that when you come through, it's something we're going to share with generation after generation after generation. It's going to be a turning point in my life and in Todd's life and in our marriage and in our walk with the Lord and in our ministry with our church as him being a pastor and the things that I do as a pastor's wife, it's going to be a turning point whenever it happens, however it happens. And I don't know when, and I don't know how, but I know he's going to. I just, I'm, I'm waiting and I'm praising him in advance and I'm praising him for all the things that I don't even know about. When I read Job 38 and 39 and 40 and 41, it is beautiful what God has done and the details that he has in there about the, the details that he's, that he's taken care of. And that, you know, I think of the, um, and I've shared this before about giving the horse the strength, the, their, their neck. And he says to sound, you know, it was, it was like the sounds like thunder and their neck. And it was that strength. And I've shared with you before about our, um, beloved horse that passed away this past year. Um, and, him just thundering 
Uh, I mean, just those a little burst of energy that God gave him right before that um, he had passed away with a um, with a growth on his lung. He's having a really hard time breathing. Um, but then God would he gave he gave him that strength, and it was just a beautiful, beautiful um, what God has done. And I, I like the um, there was one that I just read this morning. If I can remember it, it was the um, it was about the snow. Um, I can't remember now how it was in the scripture. It was something about the snow. And, and you know, the, I was like, oh, it made me think of, you know, of back up in North Carolina and, and uh, getting a good snow on the mountains and how beautiful and pure and clean. Oh, my gosh. God is so wonderful. He is so wonderful. Let's skip on now down to verse number eight. Um, I'm praying about something. I it, To me, it needs to be taken care of pretty quickly, but God's timing is always right. And verse number eight says, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He was full of compassion in John chapter 11. He had compassion on Mary and Martha. He wept. John eleven thirty six. 36, he wept. I think that's the right address. He wept with them, even knowing he, what he was going to do because they were hurting. And when we hurt, he hurts with us. He is full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy, compassionate and merciful, our God is. Verse number nine, the Lord is good to all. He's good to all, every one of us. Whether you're saved or whether you're lost, he's good to you. Whether you love him or whether you don't love him, if you hate him, God's still good to you. He still loves you. If, you are, if, you're, if you're angry with him, he still loves you. If you're upset with him, he still loves you. If you're weeping, if you're crying, if you're going through a trial, he still loves you. If you've done something that met, that's messed up, I have so many times, he still loves me. That's the difference between my heavenly father and an earthly father. Earthly fathers sometimes don't give you the benefit of the doubt. Earthly fathers sometimes don't have any compassion. Earthly fathers sometimes don't have any mercy whatsoever. No mercy whatsoever sometimes. But my God is good, and he is full of compassion, and he's got wonderful, great mercy. Verse number 10, All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. I'm going to share it not just with one generation to another generation, but I'm going to share it with other believers. I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know what it's going to, I don't know what it's going to consist of. I have no idea. But whatever it is, it's going to be wonderful, and I'm going to share it with, 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 with everyone. I want to share it with everyone. I want to shout it to everyone. I want to pop on down now to, Lord, to um, verse number 14. It says, The Lord upholdeth all that fall. If you're down, He upholdeth you. He holds me up. I've had some news that has struck me down. Physically fell to the ground over a phone call that I received. Physically fell to the ground. My brother was dead and I fell to the ground just in shock and grief, instant grief, instant, instant grief. But the Lord upholded me. He got me up. He got me going and, and, and doing what needed to be done. He upholdeth me all that fall and raises up all those that be bowed down. When we are, you know why we, we bow when we pray is that we are, we are saying, Lord, I don't have any answers. And I humbly come before you. I humbly bow before you because you are my king. You are my creator. You're my savior. You know what's right. You know how to handle things. And we don't know what the answers are. But Lord, we know you do. And we're holding on to you. We're praying and praising you. We're praying to you. We're praising you because we know you do have the control. Verse 15 says, the eyes of all wait upon thee. I like that one. The eyes of all, the eyes of all. If it's your eyes is talking about you're watching. I'm praying. I'm praying about some really big issues going on in our home right now. Some, some things that's beyond our really our capability to do something about it. 
And yet I'm watching to see what God's going to do about it. I'm watching and I'm waiting. I'm, I'm waiting and I'm resting. That word wait, I was looking it up. Um, I was in the, the, the app that I like to use is, is KJV Bible Dictionary. Dot com. I think it's dot com. Anyway, KJV Bible Dictionary. Um, and it was, and I just put in the word wait, and it come brought up a, a, a Webster's Dictionary um, of that word. And it says to rest, and I've got it wrote down here, to rest in expectation and patience, to stop or remain stationary till the arrival of some person or event. <laughs> I love that. I lo and that's just the Webster's Dictionary. And I love that. And, th and through that app that I was, it was showing me some scriptures that I could go to. And that's how I found this Psalms 145. And it is just, it's just beautiful. What can I do while I wait? I can be watching while you're waiting. Watch. Look around. Notice. When you are looking, you're going to notice God's hand on everything. His hand in everything. Every detail. And no, we won't understand it all. No, we won't have a clue sometimes of what's going on. But we know all we can do, all we can say sometimes is, "Oh, but Lord, I know Your hands on it. I know Your hands on me. I know Your You've got control." And I just love that. But well, let's proceed on. Um, that was verse number fifteen, verse number sixteen. And I hear the baby, so I gotta gotta move on. Thou openest thy hand and satisfies the desires of every living thing thou openest thy hand when i think of that open hand um avery this morning she's like hand hand titty hand she had her hand open she wanted me to put my hand in her hand she wanted to show me something and when i think about the lord and he's got his hand open and he wants me to grab a hold of it and he's got somewhere he's taken me he's got something he wants to show me and i'm going to grab a hold and i don't want to let go and I'm watching and I'm waiting and I'm anticipating. What a wonderful God that we serve. And there's more. Read the whole Psalms. It's really, really good. The Lord is, um, I'll just real quick, um, verse number 18 says, The Lord is nigh. It means he's close by. And all them that call upon him and, all, and to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desires of them that fear him. He also will hear the their cry and will save them so he will what he will fulfill what else will he do he will also hear so he's listening he's heard he's not it's it's just about timing it's just about he's doing more than what we can figure out he's doing more than just what's affecting us personally but he's doing stuff in others lives too and he will save them he's gonna he's gonna He's going to come through. Verse number 20 says, The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. Verse number 21, this is the last verse. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Bless his holy name. What do we do while we wait? We praise him. We thank him and we watch and wait and see what he does. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again soon.